All right, welcome back everyone. I was away for a few minutes letting this strip of paper dry. On this side, it's just plain white paper. I forget why I have these. I think I was cutting off a whole bunch of things with a paper cutter, so I just happened to make a whole bunch of this scrap. Um, with this uh, gloss aluminum, it, basically I get a real reflective silver side. The modernized cars that the SP put air conditioning in, um, most photos and from all the evidence that I've been reading about, uh, basically the SP did not use manila shade uh, window shades. This is to me a tape. Um, I'm just grabbing this as an example. Um, some of the cars also had a dark green interior um, window shade or exterior of the window shade that they used. Basically this is the uh, gloss, the silver color will actually be very very noticeable if we put it inside the car. So what I'm going to be doing here is using my scale rule, if I don't blind the camera, I'll be using my scale rule, mechanical pencil, and then following that up with a number 11 blade, which is nice and sharp. And what I will do is I will mark where each of the verticals is going to be, and I'll probably do it on the back of this. So I'll basically go the length of the main window section of the car and mark it. And then I'll go in and put horizontal lines for where the shades will be up or down or whatever. And I'll scribe the and and then we'll cut those not scribe. We'll cut those loose with the um, with the blade. I could use scissors too. Um, the blade does allow me to do sharper corners, and it also allows me to do cuts in the middle before I connect them with the uh, vertical lines. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to show this. I'm going to go ahead and mark it out, and then I'll show uh, another clip when we have it all marked out. So it looks like the centers are at six foot three. So I will. Unfortunately, I don't think the cameras. Yeah, I just don't have a. What I need to get is one of the little stands so that I can get better angles on this stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah. I think this is really going to be able to show. The stainless steel ruler really doesn't show well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and mark six foot three inches. And that'll be 12 and a half, 18 and three quarters, 25. And I'll basically go through here, mark them. And these marks will line up. I'll go ahead and grab this up here while we can. Uh, basically those marks, if you can see them, I don't know if that's showing very well, yeah, there we go. Um, those marks will line up with the windows like this, and that will allow us to make the transitions of the window height, um, window shades be at the correct places. I'm going to take the camera here for a moment and see if I can show briefly what I'm doing in terms of marking this. Basically I line it up like this, get the edge of the straight edge along the edge of the material, and make a mark. Not that hard. Okay, so the strip has now been marked. I don't have to be super accurate with this because basically as long as those marks land somewhere on the window column, it's not going to be a problem. Um, so now what I'll do is I will go in and I'll make my marks this way for where I'm going to be cutting. Okay, after about two minutes, I've marked out where I'm going to be making my cuts. Uh, you can see the horizontal lines here. Um, over time on a route, when the cars are away from home terminal, basically a coach yard would go through. They'd set everything up at a nice even level. I think SP was something like two inches below the level of the top of the window. So when it leaves the coach yard and the car attendant set up his car the way uh, it should be according to company specs, everything should look prim and proper and, and real pretty. Now, after um, maybe, you know, 16 a day, whatever the length of run is, then you're going to have a car side that looks like the 1005 here where some of the windows are high. Maybe this one here hasn't been moved at all, the one here. Um, but then some of them have been drawn almost all the way down. Uh, let's see, do I have any? Yeah, this side, some of them might not even be level. Hopefully they would be. This car is pretty, pretty old and, and beaten. Um, but we'll look at the 1005 a different time. 
since we're on the topic of other cars with drawn windows, I should have grabbed the 2178 here. Uh, it has several windows pulled down. It's it's more of a mixed bag. At night, if you're riding on a train, you don't want light coming in. It gets really annoying. I've been there. It's the worst thing is the crossing gates actually with the with the bright wet red lights. Um, so this car, this side of the car, basically lots of the windows have been pulled all the way down. Um, nobody really wants to see the countryside apparently out of this side of this car. Okay, let's see if I can show how this goes. Uh, basically between these two lines here, I have a mark and what I'll do is basically just scribe that with the blade. And I'm, I'm actually using a wooden floor tile here as my backdrop for you guys, so I can actually feel the grain of that backdrop um, in the tip of the blade as I'm, as I'm cutting it. I'm going to do a small... No, nope, I'm not going to be able to do that with my, with my second hand. You really need to have both hands to do this. My left hand normally would be sitting here like this, holding down the, um, the piece of material so it doesn't get away from me. Uh, I might try taping it down. Okay, I've moved the lights. Let's see if I can cut one of these then make it visible okay that X means that I'm not going to be using that piece at all I'm basically not going to be mirroring it back and forth that piece will just be scrap and you can see that I'm just working my way along the line here I use mechanical pencil for this because it's easy to erase, uh, it creates nice sharp lines. And on other materials, um, I can see it, like the uh, dark green material, manila material that I use. And it also works pretty well on the manila as well. Okay, I, I've tried doing this before, um, going the other direction. Um, this way, cutting across to separate the parts, and I really can't do that on camera, so I'm going to pause it. While I... All right, good news, everybody. There is one of our completed window strips, and here is the other one. Now, normally you'd say, well, you're just mirror imaging it. It's not going to look that good, but when one person's looking at one side of the car, they're looking at that side of the car. When they look at the other side of the car, they're looking at that side of the car. So that no, at no point is somebody going to really be able to see both sides of the car and realize what you've done. Now, the fun part here is adjusting it so that it's at the right level up and down inside the car. Um, that gets a little bit more involved. Um, and I will be getting out the, uh, the Tamiya tape here and cutting some strips. Basically, what I do is I have a piece of 40 thou styrene here. And I run a couple strips of the tape, Oop, make this so I'm not bouncing the light into the camera. Uh, basically we set that up and basically what I'll do is I'll probably, I need thinner tape but I don't really feel like buying new tape. Um, I want it about the width of the column, a little bit less, so about an eighth of an inch, or excuse me, a sixteenth of an inch. So I will scribe those up now. Okay, so here we are back again. Um, you should be able to see the scribe lines now that I've done in the tape there. If I, um, I'll probably come in here and just go across like this and that will now make it so that I can peel each one of these up on its own. There we go. I should be able to see that one coming up there and its own little curl. And we'll see about mounting these. Um, one issue on this particular car is that these uh, luggage racks above the seating area are maybe a little bit low and I'm not sure that we really want these seats being covered as much as that would make them. Uh, let's see. Eh, this side actually that wouldn't be too this side wouldn't be too horribly bad if I just if I just sat it there and taped it. So we'll see about doing that. In general when doing the uh, interior like these cars have always put the car in a convenient and comfortable place for you. Um, trying to do this for the camera is, is rather awkward and I'm, it's really reminding me of how much that's true. So I will go ahead and put in the, uh, the other side here. I'll also be putting some shades in here along the aisle windows as well. Um, and that's what I'll be using the, uh, 
the second section of material here that I haven't cut up yet for doing. I will mention that this uh, piece of scrap here is basically just a piece of extra 40 thou from building a car floor that I made. So it's not actually that critical what it is. It's, it's almost like a painter's palette. I'm just using it as something to uh, hold the tape while I do this little scribe deal and cut it into strips. Looks like I might actually get five strips out of this one. And then usually I go uh, the opposite direction here and do one cut across. And that's basically it. Um, pretty easy. You can see our, just in the time that I'm sitting here chatting, already made ten little strips to glue the pieces. Um, this, I'm thinking I'll probably cut some strips and keep these a little bit more tidy. Um, so that shouldn't, again, take very long. Um, I might even just do it here on camera. Um, probably about, I'm going to cut it about two feet maybe in scale. 18 inches to two feet in scale, something like that wide. Um, see if that's a long enough piece. I didn't scribe through all the way. Just retrace the uh, first path that I cut there. Let's see, is that long enough? Yeah, almost. I'll make them a little bit, the, the cut's just a little bit longer here. And um, then we'll wrap this car up. All right, I whipped out the scissors, and there are now little pieces of confetti silverized strip all over the place. So we will sit here and quickly put these in the car. Um, basically, I'm just going to go like this and estimate at what level. I probably will do these as more the terminal position as it comes out of the station. I think I'll scribe a couple of pieces on here that are going to be a little bit wider. Um, since it's away from the narrow window columns, I don't have to have these tape strips nearly as fine as I did before. Um, I didn't do that one very well, but it doesn't really matter. Stick my blade in there, pull the piece off. Oh, it's still in the car body, okay. Now, this time I'm going to turn the car body around this way where everybody can't see it very well, and I got that stuck. And to show you what I'm doing, basically I'm going to stick this about here, about there, and then I'm just going to grab it this way on the tip of my blade, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, I'll try my best. Maybe somewhere about there. I tack the top and that was too high. Now one nice thing about this tape is I'm actually able to pull the uh, way out of frame here. I'm actually able to pull it down. It doesn't set too stiff. Um, this this tape it's not high tack so I can actually maneuver the tape a little bit after I stick it inside the car. You can kind of tease it around a little bit if you want. Um, so here goes the next section of tape, and that, I think, I'm going to push it up slightly right now because it's not quite level, but that, I think, should do it for the windows here. Um, I'm going to grab my flashlight and light up the car side a little bit more. You should be able to see the uh, silverized reflection window pieces there now better and now it's just a matter of doing the other ones all right we're back again um, to make the disassemble or uh, installation of the window shades a little bit easier again I pulled out the other car end which was from the blind end of the car so I will be sticking that back on here like this not a problem um, I will grab the car interior and I think I'll try to show the reassembly of the car as well. Um, one problem that I've been having with these um, 
with these new runs of cars is because the car has its full mid, you know, between the truck skirting here, mid car skirting, these uh, really finely etched um, pieces of material. Let's see if I can get the etching to show there for the camera. I don't know if it will. Um, yeah, there we go. That etching right there behind the the plastic, or the plastic showing up behind there. This one keeps popping out, and they actually, most of the early run cars didn't have this. They actually glued the car side to the floor. Um, so basically, to get this car open, you had to pop those glue joints to get it to open up. And the first run cars didn't have that problem. It's almost like they retooled. Um, pull over here and show the, the center. The Here's the underframe of the car. And it, I don't know if it will show very well here, but the floor of these cars is actually slightly, it's wavy. They, they didn't use virgin, what they call virgin plastic, I don't think, for the underframe of the car. So the car is actually... Um, dimensionally floating and that's not really a good thing I'm I'm, I'm kind of loath to give bad review you know my, I'm not really doing this as a review post certainly but um, generally Atherin and Genesis have been really good quality but I'm I'm just kind of let down I would say by the the quality of this the assembly of this newer run of these cars um, what I'm doing now is I'm carefully persuading the side skirting to go around the uh, the body of the car. I'm making sure that I have the car the right way around as well. Um, the 37 built cars like these did not have um, I think I'll have to do this off camera. They did not have baggage elevators in the car side right here. So inside they had these baggage shelves. Uh, the 39 and 41 cars and I'll reach over and grab one of my MTH cars. They had baggage elevators on the outside of the car right there. And so you could basically put your bags in on the outside. The porter would help you. And they'd be uh, your, your goods would be put up inside of the interior of the car there. And you could access them from the interior. Same as on this one here with the baggage shelves being accessible from um, the inside. And let's see if I can reach in there with a pencil. Yeah, in here you could actually reach it from the inside. Um, the 37 cars didn't have that, so you want to make sure that you have the car body the right way around so when this drops on, you won't be having a problem. Okay, it's only been a few seconds and the car is basically back together now. I'm just pushing the, uh, the end locks, basically the ends of the car tab around the, um, the floor, but you can see it's spongy. It's, it's wanting to spring back. Um, there we go. So this car has now been reassembled. Um, it's it's still a little still a little gushy as they call it technical term there um, but basically that's it the car has now been reassembled um, I'm gonna grab my flashlight here and see if I can light up the um, all of the uh, window shades so you can see down at this end we have the window shades fairly high down at this end they're really high they're almost back at at terminal position. Um, this end, this side, I, I put them down pretty low along the aisle there, and then over here uh, at this end, of course. And the, these cars, like I said, they're just a little spongy. These car ends like to pop out a little bit. Um, the last thing I need to check, really, is to make sure that the interior contacts coming up through the interior of the car have actually connected with the uh, contacts in the roof. So that if I connect, let me just grab onto the car side frames here of the trucks, and let's grab that one. Yep. Okay, it works. The uh, the marker light comes on <coughs> because I'm applying DC power here. If I reverse the polarity, you'll notice immediately the the light goes out, and uh, the car interior lights actually should still be on. Um, even at this point and this car is really wanting to come apart. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time uh, putting this car back together and hopefully getting it to stay together um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to work on probably using some kind of more rubberized glue to uh, remount the uh, etching there. 
Um, again, I almost wish that they had just gone ahead and tooled it as part of the plastic side skirting because also, generally most people pry right here to, um, to open the car and, and that's in the worst place possible to have an etching um, and trying to have it not pop off. So I think that pretty well wraps it up for this. Um, I don't think this car I'm going to get a chance to show on any layouts before I deliver it to the customer. Um, I'm sp <laughs> it's funny, we're actually swapping cars. He has one of these that hasn't done any work on it all, so I'm, I'm going to get that car and I will probably build another 2436 um, that maybe I'll get to keep. So we'll have to see how this works. Have a good one.